Okay, so for this video, I am going to talk about who would need your medium term rental. The medium term rental is a 30 plus day furnished rental. This is a question I get asked about all the time when I'm trying to educate people on what medium term rentals are and how they're a good opportunity for real estate investors. It's always like, yeah, but who would want or need a furnished 30 plus day rental? I'm about to talk to you about the six archetypes that I think are the most popular that would be renting out this model. But before I get into that, I just wanna cover three things really quickly. The first is that if you like this content and you're looking for something that's kind of curated and all in one place, I have written a book on the topic. And that book is called American Nomads, Finding and Renting to Remote Workers. It definitely covers the medium term model. I just kind of refer to it as remote workers. You can find that on Amazon. And then we've also linked to it below. Second, if you like podcasts, my husband and I co-own a real estate business called Aaron and James Real Estate. And we do a 20 minute podcast, which again, there's a link for it's week and it covers Colorado topics, but it also just covers real estate topics in general about what's happening with the market, what you can expect, some of the trends, both nationally and locally. And then third, we're real estate agents. As I just mentioned, we are accepting clients right now. We service Denver and Colorado Springs. And while we work with a ton of investors, we also just do your standard buy and sell. So let's talk about who would need this type of rental. So the first model we're gonna talk about is the traveling nurse model. If you've heard of this type of rental, you're probably familiar with it in a traveling nurse capacity because that's who needed this most in the past. So traveling nurses are people that are paid a stipend by their companies, a daily stipend and a housing stipend, and then they go and work in different locations at hospitals. All the traveling nurses I have known have gone to sweet locations. They are going to LA, they're going to Alaska, they're going to Denver, they're going to Chicago. So it tends to be areas that are really attractive, but they're understaffed. They bring in these traveling nurses to help support their staff. And then subsequently, these traveling nurses need a furnished place anywhere between one month to a year, typically. Second is corporate rentals. You're gonna have a professional, they're gonna be traveling back and forth so often that the company just ends up getting them a rental that's fully furnished, booking it for a while, and then they live there. And we still have some people that book through us that way, but I think this is probably gonna become less and less popular as time goes on because of remote work. And remote work is my next group that I'm gonna talk about. Um, and I, the reason why I say that is because corporate rentals in the past supported a corporate structure that wanted you on site to meet people and to talk and work through things. And I think now because of video and because of technology, we're seeing less and less corporate work. However, remote workers are really emerging as someone that would need a medium term space. And the reason for that is because remote workers are no longer tied to the geography of their job. So you had a job in Buffalo, New York, and now you have kept that job, but you no longer have an office to go into. So you can do that same job, but you can do it in Mexico. You can do it from Mexico for two months or from Denver for two months or from Banff for a year. So your job is still located, or at least the headquarters are still located in Buffalo, but the actual individual doesn't need to be anywhere near that. And so we are seeing a ton of growth in this movement. Airbnb, 25% of their guests are asking for 30 plus day furnished models. And I guess I'm making the assumption that the reason why they've seen that jump is because remote work, COVID essentially opened up remote work. There's a lot of remote workers that are traveling all over, exploring different places, and then staying tethered to their jobs. It really is remote workers that make me passionate about this trend and make me feel like to my clients, you really should be paying attention to that because my personal belief is that that trend isn't going to slow down. And I think a lot of people believe that if anything, it's going to become more and more. So as those people can travel, they need somewhere to stay and they need it to be furnished. Okay. And so the fourth group is people potentially thinking about getting divorced. These are people that maybe the relationship isn't going that well. They just need a little time apart from one another before they actually make that decision. So I know when COVID hit, we would have, we had more people than we had in the past where they were reaching out because they realized with COVID, they were going to be home a lot with their spouse, things weren't going that well. And so they were looking for an opportunity to have a little bit of space while they figured that out. So we've had a couple people come in this way that are just kind of trying to test the waters and see if it makes sense. So that's also a group that tends to rent out these properties or just people feeling out the future of their relationship. 
So our fifth cohort is gonna be people that are moving to a city or a state where they don't feel like they have enough information to make a purchase or to sign a long-term lease. They want to live in the area first and then establish what neighborhood they wanna be in. I think this is similar to remote workers. Um, and the reason for that is because sometimes I think of remote workers as testing out cities before they commit somewhere. So they know that they like the mountains, they know they like the ocean, they know that they like a city, they're trying different things before they say, this is really where I wanna be established. People that move into a city or state, maybe they have a job and they have a deadline, so they have to be there, but they're just like, I don't want to buy a $500,000 house and then find out that I hate the neighborhood. So you have a lot more people moving in and trying out cities for a month or two before making that decision. And so those people as well need a furnished space because all of their stuff is in a pod or a storage space or they haven't moved it yet. I like this group, but I will say their leases tend to be a little bit shorter. With some of the other groups that I've mentioned, like a traveling nurse or remote work, um, sometimes with divorces, people that are getting divorced or thinking about divorce as well, they'll extend their leases, which is really nice for you because you have, you know, you're charging more, but people are renting longer. So it's more like a long-term rent. You don't have to do as much with them, but they're paying that elevated cost. People that are moving, they're probably only going to sign like a one to three month lease and they're not going to renew because they actually do want to buy. They're just trying to figure it out. Finally, this is a new emerging archetype that we've just kind of discovered. The rentals that we have in Colorado Springs are very close to colleges. They're close to two different colleges. And so I know there's a lot of stigma about renting to college students, or are they gonna trash our place or whatever, but they're actually perfect for this furnished 30 plus day model. They have graduated out of the dorms. They don't own anything. They are tied to parents that might be more responsible and co-sign the lease. We have been really, really happy with renting to college students. So for instance, right now, we have a four bed, two bath that is about a mile and a half off of campus. And we have for the last two years rented to college students for year long leases that start in September and, or I guess it's not a year, September to May. And then we have the summer open, which typically we fill for like a three month or a couple of different one months, but very happy with college students. And it's exactly what they need. They're usually very laid back, easy to work with. And again, tied to somebody that maybe is more responsible or can afford that deposit if you're worried about renting to college students. So those are the six different groups that I recommend uh, renting out to. Just to recap really quickly, that's traveling nurses, corporate rentals, remote workers, people that are trying to figure out their relationship situation, people that are moving to the city, and then finally, college students. If you like this content, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. I am definitely going to continue to add content around medium-term rentals to this channel, just because I think it's a really interesting space that's gonna change real estate in the future. Thanks again for your time.